Hi guys, welcome to my channel over here where today we're going to be doing kind of another video to go into the series I've been doing of like makeup, that type of stuff for a woman in her mid-30s. I am 37, I have texture, um, I have dry skin, I have sun damage spots, hyperpigmentation, so don't have the best of skin, right? And a lot of people that you see here on YouTube, they're young. Nothing wrong with that at all, actually. Like, I watch a lot of young YouTubers and I take their advice, even though they're 10 years younger than me. However, I did a video not too long ago directing it more towards someone in their mid-30s and it got a lot of views, got a lot of likes, so I figured I will do another one and maybe I'll start doing some here and there and make it more of a series. So if this is a video you think you're like, especially if you're in your 30s or higher, <laughs> Go ahead and subscribe give this video a thumbs up i would love to have you a part of my youtube community my amazing family on here because you know what when you get older you got to start doing your makeup a little differently it just is what it is right and we're going to go ahead and just jump on into me showing you the makeup that i use it will be the finishes it may not be like i'm not telling you guys to go out and get this brand this makeup but what i'm saying is finishes um texture that type of stuff is what I like to use for my skin as I'm getting older. So let's jump on into it and let me show you these products. All right, I think for the most part we have almost a full face here. So I'm gonna go ahead and then just go ahead and start with eyes. We're gonna start with eyeshadow. So I have the Wet n Wild Always Naked. Now, there's nothing wrong with colorful eye looks, right? Absolutely not. Sometimes I do a colorful eye look. But I feel like as I've gone older, especially if you have hooded eyes, if you're someone that's older, you know, in their mid thirties or higher and have hooded eyes, I feel like for me personally, um, when I do colorful eye look, sometimes it makes my eyes more droopy, more hooded. So I like to stick with neutrals and it's just a personal preference. But when you have, this might get messy because this thing is well loved and well used, but I picked the Wet n Wild because it's a really nice neutral tone. You've got some cool tones and some warmer tone neutrals. Then you have some like glitter shimmers and then, you know, just a lighter shimmer to put on your lid. And, you know, I personally think even though you're mid thirties or older and you have hooded eyes, you can still wear shimmer. I don't feel like it does anything wrong to your eyes. You may think different and that's totally fine. These are all um, my opinions and I'm just trying to give some information out there as far as what I like to use, my opinions, that type of stuff to kind of help you guys out. So I like to go more for a nude type of eye look. So again, you don't have to get the exact products I'm showing you guys, but this is really cheap. I got on Amazon, I think for like eight bucks. They also have Always Blushing, which is a colorful palette. So you could always go for that as well. All right, I'm just gonna grab from here. We're not gonna go in any particular order. The next product is gonna be a setting spray. Now, like I said, I have dry skin. This is the Sheer Envy Lawn Wear Setting Spray, 12 hour with cucumber extract. I actually really like this, it's almost gone. Um, I'm gonna see if I can find this in a full size because I got this with another primer, which I don't think I have for this video today. That is from Hard Candy as like a set for Christmas from the husband. And I like both of them. I like the jelly primer. I like the Elf one better because it's more gripping than that one, but that one gives a lot of hydration, I feel like, for my face. And it actually does some blurring of your pores, even though I don't really have pore issues. I do, as you guys will see, like to use pore filling, smoothing primers because I do have the texture, but I don't really have a huge issue with huge pores. Everybody has pores. They're on our face. There's no gain around having them but mine are not that big. But this really does make my makeup last. It hydrates and has that cucumber extract, which is good for your skin, especially for your skin as you get older. So anything I feel like that's hydrating, is lawn wearing, and has any good skincare ingredients like the cucumber extract, a good one to pick up for you. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead, um, let's do some cream products. Now, definitely someone with dry skin, cream is going to be your best bet. It's going to be a best friend. I actually was very terrified of cream products, especially cream blushes for a long time. Like, I was honestly scared of blushes in general where I wasn't wearing blush for probably a year or so. Um, three years ago when I really got into makeup, I used to just be the basic, sometimes foundation, and I honestly really didn't even like 
pick the perfect shade. I didn't know much about shade matching. Um, but more often than not, it would just be some eyeliner and mascara and one color on my lid for eyeshadow. I really, really advanced in the makeup category the last like four years, almost five now, about four years now. But up until this past summer, I really did not try out uh, cream products. And then I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to do it, especially blushes. They scare me. I was afraid I'd put too much on. I'd look like a clown. I'd place it in the wrong spot. Placement is definitely key, especially for someone that is of an older age. I um, like to place starting at the back of my face and I'll go down, but I don't go like all the way down to my cheeks, but I'll blend it to where it looks like. It gives you the illusion that it's down on my cheeks like for blushes and it really does give a lift. I don't like to go too far down for my blush or my bronzer. It just helps give me more of that lifted look. And when I do my eyes, I put the first, well, and the second color from blending them together, like right here in the corner, and I'll look up and I'll blend it because of having the hooded eyes like up here, just above or below my eye or my brow bone. And I like to keep that a little bit darkened and then have it lighten up as I'm going into more of my face or my eyes. Anyways, kind of off topic. I. I just, I showed you guys a video on how I apply my makeup for being in my age and I showed that to you guys. But for cream products, I really enjoy a cream blush and bronzer. I have gone crazy over the cream products since the summertime. Even now, I'm still wearing them in the winter time. I will set them with a powder bronzer and blush. Main reason for that is, especially if it's a shimmer, kind of glowy type of product, I like to keep that glow and if you use a powder pressed or loose nine times out of ten it's going to make it matte and I don't like to have an all matte face. I will say if I go ahead and use a concealer down the center of my face like if I'm going to use a brightening concealer or if I'm trying to cover any kind of spots that I have down the center part of my face, any acne spots, anything like that which I still do get every once in a while. Like right now, my skin is definitely purging. I've been trying out some new skincare products, so I think that's what's happening, but it's starting to clear up and get better. I will go ahead and set the center part of my face or when I use uh, two separate different uh, primers, like a smoothing type of primer, and then say, I don't know, a hydrating or glowy primer, I will do the smoothing primer just down the center parts and then a little bit here in the T-zone, and then the outer part will be glowy, because I really do enjoy a glowy look, even in the winter time, and I think that's really good for someone that's in their 30s or older, or mid-30s or older. Having that healthy, glowy skin is going to look really good on someone of that age, but I don't like to have an all matte face. So you'll also notice even when I use powder foundations, nine times out of ten, they're going to give you a matte. I don't think I personally have came across a powder foundation that gives you a glowy look, but I like to keep it glowy underneath by doing a glowy primer or doing a glowy cream product underneath and then still setting my face with a glowy type of bronzer, powder bronzer, or powder blush. But I feel like stick forms are good. Now I know a lot of people like to apply them to their face. I don't personally like to do that. I feel like just for me, it makes me worry that it's going to pick up my foundation. I like to take it on the back of my hand and I'm going to do this just to show you guys the, the finish of this one. Um, I chose these products because of finishes. Like I said, I'm not saying go out and go get the makeup by Mario. What is this called? Soft Pop Blush Stick in Dusty Rose. I will say the color is a beautiful shade for winter and fall. And I feel like it would be a beautiful shade on anyone that's in their mid-30s or older. But look at that beautiful glow to that finish. Like you would want to set that if you're going to set it with a powder blush instead of a setting powder. Because you're going to lose that glow if you do a setting powder. I would set it with a glowing blush. But it's just really pretty. But I'll put it on the back of my hand and I'll take my brush and I will tap it on because again, you don't want to, I don't think anyone should, but how, especially for someone that's of my age and older, you don't want to just go in with this big glob, you know, with the stick, apply it and then try to blend it out. Even if the product is really good, sometimes you're going to have a hard time blending that product out if you're just going on and then you just have this strip, you know, of product on your face. Plus you're going in with a lot. So I like to go in, apply a little bit, dab it on, and then start from the back and blend it downwards and up and just blend it. And I feel like that works really, really, really well. And it makes like, again, my lifted face. 
Um, and if I have to, I'll go back in with more. But this is a really great product. It's got that beautiful glow. It's a beautiful shade, like Dusty Rose is beautiful. They have it in a powder form that I do want to at some point pick up and try it out in the powder form. All right, so now we have, let me find it here, a bronzer that is cream. So I chose the NARS in Laguna 01. And the reason why I did this is it blends like a dream. As you can see, it's well loved and well used. It's nice and creamy. And that's what you want for someone that's got the aging skin, that's got the dry skin, that's even got texture skin like I do. You want something that's going to be nice and creamy. And I picked a lighter shade. Again, shade preference is your own preference, but I feel like a lighter shade you can use, especially with this this product in itself, the Laguna Nars one. Laguna one, you can, for me, I can contour if I want to, but I can also bronze with it. Or you can use it to contour and then you go over that spot with a darker shimmery bronzer to set it. And then it looks really pretty. You got a contour and a bronzer all in one. But it's just so nice and creamy. It blends like a dream. So I feel like this would be perfect for a newbie to any kind of cream product, but it's not too orange. The shade is perfect. It's definitely not too orange. And I feel like you're just going to see that lifted look easier with this because you're not going to, it's not, it's, you're not going to have a mistake. It's going to be really hard to make a mistake with that. I feel like cream products are a dream for women in their thirties and higher. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and go with some, oh wait, we do have one more cream product. So for highlighter, I've actually kind of stared away from highlighters lately, you guys. I really only put them the tip of my nose right here. I don't even put it down the center of my face anymore because I would put my cream blush and powder blush on the center part of my nose and then my cupid's bow and in my inner corners. I'm not doing it on my cheeks anymore. I don't know why. I'm just not really into highlighters as often but I feel like a cream highlighter would be the best. And this is actually the one I'm wearing today, this Spotlight from Charlotte Tilbury. You don't need a lot at all for this. It's so nice and shiny as you can see on camera. I have it just down the center points and then my inner corner. You can always put it on your cheek if you want and it's gonna give a beautiful glow. It doesn't show your texture. It, I mean, it, it probably does a little, mainly because I feel like all highlighters do, at least personally, I feel that way but it's not going to make it look worse. It's not gonna be like, oh my gosh, she's got texture, I can see it. You would have to be super close to see. So I feel like a really good cream highlighter would be your best bet over powder, but then again, you would wanna set it if you can put it on your cheek with either a loose or pressed powder or a highlighter that is a powder, which again, I prefer to go with a powder to set my creams, like a powder highlighter blush and bronzer. And because of that, now we're gonna go over our powder face products. So the first one is the highlighter by Essence. And the reason why I chose this one is it's just, it's not in your face blinding to the point that you're gonna see your texture. It really is a beautiful shade and it is somewhat blinding. I mean, but it's so nice and smooth. So you want a really nice smoothing highlighter if you're gonna apply it to the cheeks when you have texture because it's not going to accelerate that texture too much. So you would want something to the effect of the Essence one. And then for my powder bronzer, I have the Tarte Shape Glow Glow Bronzer. I, like I said, love glowy skin even in the fall and winter. And this I use a lot to set. And I like to use this one a lot of times with that NARS one. And that's one reason why I went ahead and chose this one to show to you guys because the shades match really well. And the shade that I have is the lightest shade, but again, it's not too orange. It's, it's the perfect shade. It's not glittery. Now you don't want to have products that are going to have glitter all over your face. That's not what you're gonna want. Let's go ahead and compare the NARS next to that bronzer and I'll show you what I mean. Like they are very close in shade that I feel like if you're gonna set with a bronzer, you're gonna wanna set with that bronzer or one close to the shade. So here is the Laguna Nars Cream Bronzer and here is the Tarte Powder Bronzer. And it's you're gonna keep this glow if you use a glowy type of bronzer like that one. As you can see, glow is kind of the thing here, right? All right, the next one I'm, is next one I'm showing you guys is the Kiss and Tell Press Powder Blush from ColourPop. It's got a nice little mirror, so that is nice. I don't think I've ever used the mirror, but it is nice. 
and here's what the color looks like, the kiss and tell shade, and then here's what it is on the skin. Now, shades are definitely, I feel like, a personal preference. However, I feel like you don't wanna go too deep for someone that's of our age or anyone that's got a lot of texture, but that's just a really beautiful, like, peachy pink. And it's really nice and smooth and that's the main reason why i chose this one it wasn't really the shade it was more so the texture it's just so smooth and it blends very easily it's not going to be hard to blend out i've never had an issue with that product blending so those are the powder products that i would suggest at least those types like the formulas the texture the finishes is what i would suggest to use all right, let's go ahead and just jump into two powders that I have here. I have a loose and press. Um, sometimes I like to set my under eyes with a loose powder first and then a pressed powder. It kind of just depends on what I'm going for for that day. But we have the Makeup by Mario Professional in the shade 01 Vanilla. I use this not all over my face. I use it just for under my eyes when I'm setting with a loose and then going with the pressed powder. I've used it a lot. I have tried it throughout all over my face before. It, it doesn't look bad. It definitely gives a nice blurring, smoothing effect. And that's why I like under my eyes because I have texture. I have fine lines and wrinkles under there. But I just, again, don't like a full matte face. So sometimes I will use it down the center part of my face if that's all that I'm setting on my face for powder. But for the most part, it goes under my eyes. But it is so finely milled. And I think for setting okay. under the eyes, very finely milled, smooth, blurring. Those are the three things at our age that you want to look for in a powder. And just to show you, in case you didn't know, it took me a while to try this. It is just very, very finely milled. And it really does do a great job at smoothing and blurring. And that's why I like to use this loose powder if I'm going to go in with a loose and press under my eyes first. So it, again, doesn't have to be that exact one but it definitely should be one that's very smoothing, blurring, and finely milled. And there you can see where I put it on my hand, it's giving that blurring, smoothing effect, even on the back of my hand. It really is an amazing, amazing powder. Like, I love it. And then the next one is the Triple Fix Translucent Setting Powder. I do have this in kind of the wrong shade. It's supposed to be a medium tan, but honestly, that's not really medium tan. I would say that's lighter. I try to get the translucent shade. I picked this up to try a one brand LYS first impressions makeup video, and it took me forever to be able to do that video because translucent was just always sold out. Every time I tried to go get it, it was sold out. So to do that video, I just picked the next shade up. I like to use this under my eyes, and I'm going to show you. It really isn't as dark as you would think due to the fact it says medium tan. I don't think this is much of a medium tan shade. I do, do still want to get the translucent shade, but because it is a little bit darker, and I like to put this under my eyes and then the center part of my face, but I will go in with this after a loose powder, and it just sets it even better. And when I set my under eyes, I showed this in that last video, but I'll go ahead and tell you guys here real fast. I will go down here. And the same for applying my concealer. I just don't go straight in right under my eyes because of those fine lines and wrinkles. I will start down here and I will work my way up and I will set here and then I will start working my way up under my eyes. I'll look up and then I'll press it in. That way, by the time I get, and this goes for the concealer part as well, by the time I get under my eyes where those fine lines and wrinkles are, where most of them are, I should say, I don't have as much product on. I have very, very little product left as far as the concealer or my powder, and I'm not caking all this powder under my face or all this concealer under my face, and it's going to crease and look horrible or drying or cakey or anything like that and either one of these powders here they never make my under eye dry or cakey there are other powders that i do enjoy and i do use but i will say these are their products at least for the powders that i like the most so i suggest a pressed powder that's going to do the same thing if you don't want to go in with a loose powder if you're more of a pressed powder person blurring smoothing and finely milled and the lys pressed powder is just this it's just the same version as the Makeup Forever loose powder. I just sometimes find setting with a loose first and then a press definitely helps. When I do that, I don't use as much though as if I'm just gonna go in with the press powder. If I'm not gonna go in with loose and press, I go in with just a press powder. 
but I also find doing it with both of those helps a lot. Like if I really need my makeup to last like all day, if my makeup is being put on super early in the morning and it needs to last till like seven, eight, nine o'clock at night, then I'll go in with both. But if I'm just needing it to last half the day pretty much, then like on a day off and I'm not really doing anything, I'm just hanging around the house, maybe going out and running a few errands and that's about it. If I'm not doing anything with the family, the husband, if I'm not going to any type of event, then I don't go ahead and use a loose and press powder. Okay, speaking of concealers, I have three to show you. So the first one, bear with me, just, just stay with me and hear me out, is the Rewind Blurring Full Coverage Concealer. Now this one, you would think I would say stay away from. It's thick, stay away from if you have the fine lines, the wrinkles, the texture. However, it's got this nice cooling applicator. I've never used it like this. I always put it on the back of my hand and I always start, start it with very little. And the reason why I am sharing this one and telling you to at the very least, if you can use a thick one, this is probably the one product out of everything that I've tried at least that I would tell you to go get this exact product because no, typically a thick one, you wouldn't want to have for someone of our age. However, it, it is thick. As you can see, this is a thick product. And it, um, I don't have a lot on the back of my hand because I go in with very little and I build it up. That's how I work with that. I don't go in with a lot because then it is, it's gonna be very, like not cakey or dry or anything because it really does smooth the under eyes. It really does blur your under eyes. And it's full coverage, even with the little bit that I use, like today I'm wearing it and I went in with it three times with just a little bit. I, you know, applied it with my brush, then blended it out a little bit more with my sponge. And then I went back in it, did the, did those steps like three times. And I went in with a little bit more than this, but it, once you start blending it though, it really does thin out and it's nice and blurring and smoothing. It's a great, great concealer. I feel like it's very underrated and not talked about as much. So you have to be careful if you're going to get a thick one, but it's nice and full coverage. It's nice and like, even look at that. It's even like hydrating, but it's full coverage. I don't know how that works. It's a great concealer. So I will say, even though I said in the beginning, I'm not telling you to go out and buy these products. If you're gonna go out, in my personal opinion, and get a full coverage, thicker type of concealer, I would get that Haley's Rewind. All right, the next one is a new one to me, but I love. Oh my gosh, you guys. The Sephora Best Skin Ever is amazing. Like, I'm definitely hopping on the Sephora train and I'm gonna be trying more from their collection. I'm definitely gonna be trying their foundation out in a first impressions. I have mine in the shade 17.5N and this one I have in light neutral. It's a little bit darker than I would assume for a light neutral, but it works for my skin, just depending on what foundation I'm wearing. This one is the opposite, super thin, almost like watery. I would say it's a light to medium on me, but oh my gosh, again, look how hydrating it is. Here's a thing for the under the eyes, hydrating, but it blends, blends, blends beautifully, beautifully. It looks so beautiful under the eyes. It's so smoothing. It blends out like a dream. This is like the perfect product for someone in their thirties and higher. Okay. And then we have the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Light Concealer in the shade Buttercup. This one I like to use down the center part of my face if I'm going for, you know, brightening up my inner, or my, my inner, my center part of my face, or if I'm trying to brighten my under eyes. So there's Buttercup by Too Faced. So I say always have a good brightening concealer as well. And I don't put it all under my face. I will apply here on the inner corners, just right here, and then up here where I get like those blue, I don't know, it's discoloration of like blue there. I think almost everybody has that. And then I blend it out first. I go in with my brightening concealer first, just to brighten it up. And then I will go in with whatever concealer I'm using. So any good brightening concealer, I think everyone of our age should own. And that's the only one I have, but it's good. All right, now we are gonna hop into the only one I have for uh, mascara, and it is the Tarte Tartlet Tubing. Let me tell you, if 
you aren't sure about a tubing mascara or you aren't sure about this one, get the small size. I've had this for weeks. I use it almost every day. I don't have it on right now, but almost every day I use this and I still have quite a bit left. So really you don't need to go out and get the full size right away. And I love when companies give you that option of having the smaller version to try it out first. Cause you never know if you're gonna like it or not. Tubing mascara, amazing. I feel like go find a good tubing mascara that lifts your lashes, that gives them volume because as we get older, our lashes thin out just like the, all the other parts of our body with hair on it, it thins out. This is amazing. It comes off so easily with water. It doesn't smudge. It, it won't give you raccoon eyes. It doesn't flake. So get an amazing tubing mascara for your mascara. All right, and then let's go ahead and browse. I only have one brow product, so I'm showing you this one brow product, but the main reason I'm showing you this is a get one that has a gel on the end. If, if you can, if you can find a good one that you like, that you like the shade, that you like the formula that comes with a gel. Unfortunately, I don't know what's wrong with my gel on this one because it's like super dry when I apply it. I don't know if this one particular, the Edge and Sketch by Tarte, is supposed to be dry. I don't like it. So I tested it out in a first impression. You guys have already seen that video and I haven't used it since, but I do use the pencil part. Now you can go to the drugstore and get the CoverGirl one and Micro Brow, I think is what it's called, and get the same effect as this. So you don't have to go spend $20 on one. And this is actually the smaller version of the big one too, which I find very interesting because that's big. But anyways, just get one that's a thin, thin like this. And that's why I mentioned the CoverGirl because that's my favorite drugstore one. I just haven't gone out and repurchased it. I need to, it's like six bucks. But you just need a very thin, finely milled one so you can fill in those brows. I don't usually go with big fluffy brows. I usually stick with mine like this. It's just what works for my face. To each their own, however you want to do your brows. But I feel like you should always at least have one thin brow pencil in your collection. However it is that you do your brows, I feel like that's best to fill in those brows. Because I feel like filling in your brows at our age is going to help even if you like them fluffy, if you like them flat like mine, it doesn't matter. You should have one to help fill those in. All right, now let's go ahead and do, let's go ahead and do lips. So I have a couple lip products here. Okay, more than a couple. Um, I have a lip liner. This one is from Milani. It is in the shade, it's the under, understatement lip liner in French Rose. I like pinky nudes and nudes. And this is a pinky nude and I feel like the, the shade doesn't really matter much, but I'm just giving you guys the information. It's a beautiful shade. I feel like for our lips, when we get to our age, this is very important on what we use. I like a lip liner that's not gonna be drying, that's gonna be creamy and nice and easy to apply. That's the Milani lip liner. So not expensive, I think they're like seven or eight bucks very inexpensive, very, very creamy, nice good products. They last a long time and that's also important to me. So get a nice creamy, non-tuggy, non-drying, easy to apply, long lasting lip liner. Whatever brand it may be, get one that has that type of formula. And then we're gonna go with this lip product that is the Tula Skincare Lip SOS Lip Treatment in Pink Coconut. This one is amazing. I use this at nighttime, I'll use it during the day. I'll use it over lipstick. I'll use it to apply at the very beginning of me applying my makeup. I let it sit on there and treat my lips before I go in with whatever lip product. It is so hydrating. It does give you a little bit, once you've got it blended out on your lips, it does give a little bit of a pink tint, but nothing crazy. Um, it is a little sticky. I, I do say that, but again, I'm I don't mind that as long as it's not too sticky to where my lips, when they move, you can see the product, that's gross. But look how hydrating that is. You need a very nice hydrating lip treatment. Our lips get drier, especially in the winter time, but more so as we get older, and you want something that's going to help your lips, not dry them out. If you have a product that's gonna dry your lips out, then it's gonna show all your lines, and as we get older, we get lines on our lips as well. And that brings me to the next two products. So I have the Kosas Lip Oral in Wet, and this one is in the shade Fair. This is so hydrating for my lips. I have heard some people say it's drying on them. I don't know, for me, the opposite. So 
so look at that it's glossy which i love my lip products to be glossy when it's a lip gloss a lip oil a lip treatment that type of lip product i love them to be glossy this is amazing i wear this again over on or over on top of lip products on its own at nighttime before i go in with lip products do it the same um it not only not only for my lips does it hydrate it? It gives it this beautiful glossy look. And I feel like these smaller versions, because I got this in a set during a Sephora sale, like before Christmas, I got three of them. One of them was a very shimmery color I didn't like, so I passed on to one of my kids and then I kept two. Um, one's like this darker brown and the other one's a lighter brown. Again, the shades don't really matter as much, that's personal preference, but you want one that's gonna be glossy like this, hydrating, and lip smoothing. I feel like when I put this on, it smooths my lips and my lines don't necessarily disappear, but they aren't pronounced. You can't be like, oh my gosh, she's got all these lines on her lips. Like I, it doesn't help them necessarily disappear, but I feel like you don't see them as much. So a little bit of disappearance, I guess, but not like where there's none whatsoever on your lips. The next one is a lip gloss and is the Physician's Formula Diamond Plumper. Um, does it have the shape champagne custom cushion cut this is what I have on today is probably coming off because of drinking my coffee I'm gonna apply it to my lips so you guys can see it on the lips too but here's what that looks like it's like the you know it's almost so there's the physician's formula there's the wet and or the wet and wild the Kosas wet lip lip oil they are so close in formula the shades are slightly different. This one is nice and shiny. This one I feel like actually does more of smoothing my lines than the Kosas one. But let's go ahead and apply a little bit and you guys can see. Look at that. Look how shiny it does the lips. Ah, so beautiful. I love this lip product and it totally gives your lips a beautiful shine. I will use this on its own again at nighttime, again before makeup and over lip products. It's beautiful. So get one, a lip gloss and lip oil. I would suggest both that are hydrating, glossy, especially more so for the gloss. You want one that's hydrating, glossy and will um, be you know, helping with your lines, whether they completely disappear or not, to at least help not pronounce them more. And you want a lip oil to do the same thing, but your lip oil, you definitely want to be hydrating because it's a lip oil. It should be, right? All right, the last product is a lipstick, and this is newer to me, but I had to pick this one because it's not drying, which there are others like the Milani ones, which I have up there. Amazing lip products. Amazing. The shades are beautiful. I want to get the red one. I don't know what it is, but I'm kind of gravitating towards like red lips since I tried um, the Makeup by Mario one for Christmas. And oh my gosh, I'm gravitating more towards red. You guys heard it here first because I, I don't like the color red in clothes and makeup. But this is a twist top. The shade again is beautiful. It's a nudie pink. So go figure, right? But it's, as you can see, I mean, it's not matte. It's not a matte, but it is. Like it's matte, but it's got like this wet hydrating formula to it. And it really stays long lasting. It doesn't pronounce the lines on my lips. It really is just this beautiful lip product. I got it in the set that came with their glosses and lip plumbers, which I already tried the lip plumper a while ago in a different shade. I. I can't say enough good things about that lipstick. It really is nice and creamy, easy to apply. It lasts a long time. It does come off like I feel like most lips do, especially hydrating lip product, but I'm okay with reapplying halfway through my day. Just like, you know, my gloss came off on here, but it's okay, I'm fine with reapplying it. All right, a few more products, then we're done. I have two primers. Now it's all in how you prime your face with your skincare. I want to preference that you need to have good skincare. I'm someone that has evidence um, of not good sunscreen use, not using as often as I should. I've always used sunscreen, just not as often, and that is how I got the sun damage spots. So I want to preference that no matter what, good skincare, especially at our age, we've got to have some good skincare. And that's not saying go out and buy all of, you know, 
this different skincare and all these different categories where you need all these different products like that's that's not what i'm saying but you need to definitely make sure your skin is well prepped with skincare before going in with makeup even before a primer skincare is the first most important step to a good makeup look i'll preference that i might do a video too on the best skincare products for people of our age. If you think that's a video that you might be interested in, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe. And then I will know you guys want to watch those videos and I will do one with skincare too. Okay. So having dry skin, I love glowy skin. I feel like even if you have oily skin, if you do it right, you can have glowy skin and it look beautiful and not greasy. I've seen other YouTubers who have oily skin use some of the same glowy products I use and they love them. So it really just depends. But you're going to alter the finish of your foundation with the primer that you use. I really love a good glowy hydrating primer and the Essence Hello Good Stuff Glow Serum Primer is amazing and I've said this a few times in some recent videos, but from someone who is now using this and has used the Glow Recipe Dew Drops, these are a dupes. Again, I'm just collecting stuff to get my first dupes video out for you guys. So bear with me. I'm going to guess maybe a few more months and then I'll have everything I need for that video. But get one that's nice and glowy, but not like super, super glowy. Now I have the e.l.f. one and I thought about showing that one too, but that one I feel like might be a little too much for some people with texture because I love that one and I use it quite often. I'm almost out of it actually. However, I do notice if I go a little bit overboard, which I tend to do, I end up not looking like a grease ball, but you can see my texture a lot more than if I didn't wear it. So I apply this on the back of my head and the smell of this one is amazing. It's like a watermelon fruity scent, but look how hydrating that is. And it gives a nice glow, but it doesn't show off my texture like the e.l.f. one does. But if I'm not going overboard, which doesn't usually happen <laughs> with the e.l.f. one, then it, it's not too much. But I still really love the e.l.f. one. The e.l.f. one's a good one, too. So it's really going to depend on what your skin is dry when it comes to this glowy, dewy primers and even the finishes of your foundation. Um, whether you've got dry skin or you've got oily skin. And again, I feel like an oily skin person can wear a dewy, glowy primer. It just has to be done right. And then the next one is the Cali Ray So Blowing Clean Blurring Primer. In love, obsessed. This really smooths your skin and blurs everything out. And I feel like that's important for someone of our age. I definitely need to get another one. And for somehow it also is hydrating. It blows my mind. It's a plumping hydrator, pore eraser, oral controller, makeup replacer. Now, if you're someone who doesn't have a lot of problems with your skin, you might get away with just putting this all over your face and calling it good or maybe put this all over your face and then go in maybe on the out, outer portions where you don't have you know a lot of problems and you could maybe put the elf on there to give yourself a glowy look and just be done with your face makeup as far as um like a um complexion product that's the word so this is amazing i also do enjoy the Haley's beauty rewind one that was the first one I've tried this past year, but this one, I have to show it to you guys. This one is amazing. It's not silicone base, and I love that because I'm not really one for silicone base. All right, three more, and then we're done in their foundations. So I'm going to start out with um, the three different types of foundations. I'm going to start out with powder. Now, you would think, Dong, you have dry skin. Why would you use powder foundation? Because you have to find the right one. This one is Essence 16 Hour Cover and Last Powder Foundation in the shade 07 Natural Sedu. This is amazing. Now again, you can, this will be matte. It will be matte, it's a powder foundation. Again, I don't think I've ever came across in my searches for trying powder foundations, one that will give you a dewy glowy look. So it will be matte. However, you can alter it a little with using a glowy primer. I've used this with this one, I've used this with the e.l.f. one, and although it does mattify it still, it does, the glow between this one or the e.l.f. one does come through, so that's that's great. But you want one that's not going to be cakey, that's going to be smoothing and blurring, and that's what this is. I like to use this to set. I even use this to set my under eyes today. So I will use this to set as well as a powder foundation, and you want one that's going to, again, be finely milled, be 
smoothing and blurring and that one is like that essence one is absolutely amazing i thought about trying the fenty one if any of you guys have tried that one let me know but whew, this one um i just recently found the last few months before this one the elf camel cc powder was my favorite that one has now this essence one has exceeded the elf one the elf one's really good too don't get me wrong but i love this essence one and it's only like six bucks essence i don't know where essence was my whole life you guys but i discovered essence this year and or last year i should say because i'm 23 now so in 22 and blows my mind with some of their product there is one that most people are not going to agree with me that i did not like and that was the lash princess in the green packaging mascara i don't know because when i first tried it I really liked it in that video. It lifts my lashes. It makes my lashes look good, but for some reason, over time, it now flakes, it smudges, it clumps up. I don't know. Maybe it's one of those products that when you first get it and it's first opened, it applies really well, and then throughout time of it being open, it doesn't work as much. I don't know, but it makes me sad because I heard so many amazing things about it. Anyways, so as far as powder foundation, non-drying, smoothing blurring finely milled is what our skin needs at our age all right now we have a tinted moisturizer so i used to when i first got more into more than just the basic makeup four or five years ago i used to go for full coverage and at that time i was like 30 31 maybe 31 and that and that was okay for me at that age however as i'm getting older i am more now going more towards the lighter medium coverage so i came across the tower 28 sunny days raw spectrum spf3 tinted sunscreen i don't know why they call it a tinted sunscreen because i feel like it's also a tinted moisturizer but whatever with the name this is let me also phrase just because there's sunscreen in here and it's 30 spf apply your separate sunscreen because you'd have to really apply a ton of this on your face to get even though it is spf 30 to get the full 30 coverage so I wanted to make that clear. That may be a mistake someone might use at some point. Anyways, tinted sunscreen, tinted moisturizers, I feel like are really good for our skin because we don't want to just cake a bunch of stuff on our skin. So even when I go with any of these products, with my cream products, my powder products, you know, highlighter, blush, bronzer, all of that, I go in with very little and I build up if I want. And then when I like, after I've set my cream or after I put my cream products on and then I go with my powder blush and bronzer to set it I only put a little bit on enough to set it and maybe give a little bit more coverage But I don't go in all crazy with it because again, you don't want to cake a bunch of stuff on your face especially powders When you're of our age group, but this is amazing. I'm wearing it today. It doesn't have full coverage It's more of a light to buildable light medium coverage, but it is beautiful it does cover the things that i want it to on a light coverage no makeup makeup type of day and it does um, give you nice hydration and it's got a little bit extra sunscreen in it for us so that's an amazing product as well all right and the very last one is a for me a medium coverage is the house labs triclone skin tech foundation in the shade uh, 1110 light neutral this is beautiful it blurs it smooths it has become my number one foundation of 2022 and i just i love it you guys have seen me use it in videos you've seen me talk about so much in videos but i had to choose this one because out of all of them besides the nars one which was my favorite before this one came out is beautiful like between this one and the nars amazing my two favorite foundations you want one that's going to not be full coverage i mean i guess if you like full coverage go for full coverage just don't apply too much i just personally think someone that's in our age category and higher you want something that's going to be a light to light medium coverage because you don't want to have all this stuff caked on and the more complexion product we have on the more it's going to you know settle on those fine lines and those wrinkles and those pores and it's just gonna look dry and cakey and look horrible you might as well not put any foundation on at that point um the packaging is beautiful but i just had to throw out the packaging because i love packaging sometimes i'll buy a product just because of packaging but again i'm not saying go and get this one 
I am sure there's others out there who, that could mimic this. Maybe not, I don't know. I haven't tried to find a dupe for this one yet, but amazing. It blurs, it's hydrating, it's dewy glowy, but not overly dewy glowy. It's less dew and glow than this one. And it just blurs. It look, It's your skin, but better. It really does look like your skin if you don't go overboard with it. Because I mean, even with a lighter medium like foundation, you could go overboard and apply too much. Um, but then what's the point in having a light medium coverage, right? You're wanting to have it lightly medium covering your face. Now, for whatever reason, have a light medium coverage foundation and apply it like it's a full coverage foundation. Don't do that. But it really does look like your skin doesn't look like you have this product on your skin it's just absolutely beautiful beautiful and you guys i've already spoiled it for you this will be in my favors for fall winter video that i will be doing in the next couple months i think i said february because there's some newer products i've been trying i tried out kind of towards the end of 22 like november december that i want to see if it's going to be put in that favors video or not so spoiler this is in there in the category and with that video I'm gonna try to have no more than two products for each category FYI all right guys so that is it that is the type of products that I suggest you use for someone that's in our age category thank you so much for watching hit the thumbs up the bell notification and subscribe I would love to have you a part of my YouTube family and I'm gonna let you guys go a little bit longer than I planned it to but I hope you guys enjoy this information and you find some good products that work for your skin bye thanks for watching